Here we've got a pair of simultaneous equations, one linear, one quadratic. First step in solving these is to take the linear equation and to make either x or y the subject. You can do whichever one you think is easier here. So in this case, I'm going to make uh, x the subject. So I'd have 2x equals 5 minus uh, 3y, and then x is a half of 5 minus 3y. Now we want to substitute that in to the quadratic equation for the second step here. To make it slightly easier, I'm actually going to start by writing that x squared here, squaring both sides, would be a quarter, which is a half squared, multiplied by 5 minus 3y squared. And we could go even further here and say 2x squared then is 2 times this, which is a half uh, 5 minus 3y squared. So I can substitute in this 2x squared for this 2x squared here in the quadratic equation, which just means replacing the 2x squared with a half 5 minus 3y squared here. So we've got a half 5 minus 3y all squared plus 3y squared equals 35. By doing this, we've got an equation now that just has y in it. It's a quadratic equation in y, and we can go ahead and solve that. So the next step will be to multiply out these brackets. And don't forget, when you've got 5 minus 3y all squared like this, you can't just do 5 squared and 3y squared. It's 5 minus 3y multiplied by 5 minus 3y like this. So multiplying out all the terms, I get 5 times 5 is 25. 3y times 5 is 15y. So I've got minus 15y. I've got another minus 15y and then minus 3y times minus 3y gives me 9y squared. So overall multiplying this out gives me 9y squared minus 30y plus 25. So here we've got half of 9y squared minus 30y plus 25 plus 3y squared equals 35. This half's a bit awkward so I'm just going to multiply both sides of the equation by 2 here and get 9y squared minus 30y plus 25 plus 6y squared is equal to 70. Then collecting together the terms, we've got 9y squared and 6y squared gives 15y squared. I've got a minus 30y, and if I subtract the 70 from both sides of the equation here, uh, 70 minus 20 is 45, so that gives me minus 45 here. Um, and that's all equal to zero. And now before we try to factorize this equation, you really would want to notice here that everything is a multiple of 15. So we can divide both sides of the equation by 15 and we would get y squared minus 2y minus 3 equals 0, which makes things a lot easier. And that's because I can now factorize this to get y minus 3 times y plus 1 is equal to 0, and that gives me then that y is equal to either 3 or minus 1. If you're not sure how that bit works, look up solving quadratic equations or factorizing quadratic equations. I've made some videos, lots of other people have as well. This next point is where you've got to be really careful in this linear and quadratic case, and it's a bit different to the easier case where both are linear. We've got to substitute these y values back in to find the corresponding values of x, because remember, solutions to simultaneous equations are pairs of values, here x and y, where when you substitute them both in, uh, they satisfy these equations. But for the linear and quadratic case, it really matters which one you substitute back into, and we have to substitute into the linear one to make this work. Hang on to the end, by the way, for a full explanation of that. So if we substitute y equals 3 into the linear equation here, we get 2x plus 9 equals 5. That gives me 2x equals minus 4, or x equals minus 2. So I've got one solution uh, to these uh, equations, which is minus 2, 3, and if I substitute in y equals minus 1 instead, I'm going to get 2x minus 3 equals 5, so that's 2x equals 8, and x equals 4. So we get the other solution here, which is 4 uh, and minus 1 there. So together, these two do form the full solution uh, to the simultaneous equations. We've got that either uh, x equals minus 2 and y equals 3, or x equals 4, y equals minus 1, which we often express as coordinates like this. And that's the key to why it's so important to substitute in to the linear equation, not the quadratic one. Because one way of interpreting the solutions to these simultaneous equations is to say they are the coordinates of the points where the graphs of these equations intersect. And if you were to draw the graphs of these, the quadratic one here, 2x squared plus 3y squared equals 35, would be uh, an ellipse and 2x plus 3y equals 5 would be a straight line. They would look something like these two equations. So you can see that the points that we've uh, found here, we've got uh, this one here, which is minus 2, 3, and I've got this one here, which is uh, 4, minus 1. And we got those by substituting the y values, right, so into the linear equation. So I took 
the y value here of 3 and said, OK, what points on this line have y value 3? Ah, oh, well, it's just this one here. If I'd substituted back into the ellipse instead, there would have actually been two points. There'd been another point over here, which would have had the same y value as uh, as, as this point here. It would have been on the ellipse, but not on the straight line. The same with this one, right? This one has um, y coordinate of minus 1. We found this point that has x-coordinate 4, and that one lies on both the line and the ellipse. But if I'd substituted just into the ellipse, I'd have found this other point over here as well. We'd have had to solve a quadratic equation. We'd have got two values in each case, but two of them wouldn't have been solutions to the original problem. If you're ever unsure, you can always, of course, double check your answers by taking these values, substituting them back into both of the equations. And that's always a good final check on a simultaneous equations answer to make sure that the answer you've got really does solve the problem you set out to. If you found this useful, check out my online courses or take a look at this video working through some functions questions that are at a similar level of difficulty to this.